That's Juarez, the father of Mexico. If I wouldn't know a picture of George Washington, you would say I was an awful dumb Mexican. I've never seen it fail. Try to give Ramon a friendly criticism and he kicks it right back in your face. No, he's right. I've got a lot to learn. Now we've got that settled, build a cart. Makes you feel any better, he's got even less use for women. What are they talking about in there? Discussing each other's weaknesses? I didn't know they had any. Right now, Ramon's on the receiving end. If we shut out the women from the life of the Come union... Come on, bet! Let's break up that game. We can't think of them just as housewives, but as partners. And we have to treat them as such. Well, look who's talking. A new world's champion of women's rights. Well, cut it out, Ruth. Me? I'm a camp follower, following his organizer from one mining camp to another. Montana, Colorado, Idaho. But does he ever think to organize the women? No. Wives don't count in the Anglo locals either. <laughs> Not that I like the way you treat your wife, Ramon. I think you're all wrong. But when Dr. Barnes here gives you his cure-all for female problems, just ask him if he's tried it at home. Hey, Esperanza. Esperanza is nursing the baby. There goes the game. Good. Consuelo, turn off the radio. Come on, Papa. On your feet. He'll have it good. Someday. What were they saying about you in there? They say I'm not good to you. You are not good to me in jail. I'd lie in my cell and my cot and I couldn't sleep. With the bugs and the stink and the heat. And I'd say to myself, think of something nice. Something beautiful. And then I'd think of you. And my heart would pound against the cut for love of you. Not just Juanito. You'll have it good too, Esperanza. We're gonna win the strike. What makes you so sure? Because if we lose, we lose more than a strike. We lose the union, and the men know it. And if we win, we win more than a few demands. We win something bigger. Hope. Hope for our kids. Juanito can't grow strong on milk alone. Is this the Quintero place? What do you want? We've got a court order. You can't come in here without a warning. We've got the warrant, too. We don't want no trouble. All we want is this radio We hate to break in on you folks like this, but this here fellow owns the radio store, and he got himself a repossession order. Don't touch it. We don't want no trouble with you, Quintero. We've got orders to repossess this machine. I said don't touch it. Let him take it. Over my dead body. I don't want your dead body. I don't want you back in jail either. But it's yours. I won't let them. Can't you see they want to start a fight so they can lock you all up at one time? But the strike did not end. It went on and on, into the fourth month, the fifth, the sixth. The company still refused to negotiate. They tried to turn the Anglo miners against us. They say that all Mexicans ought to be sent back where they came from. How can I go back where I come from? The check that I was born in is buried on the company property. Why don't nobody ever tell the bosses to go back where they come from? There wouldn't be any bosses in the state of New Mexico if they did. 
Brother, live to see the day. Jenkins ain't no boss. You mean we're going to let people like Jenkins stay here? You can't send him back to Oklahoma. It would be inhuman. But I was born in Texas. Oh, no! That's even worse. And the seven months came. We couldn't buy food at a company store. By now, the strike fund was nearly gone. A few families couldn't take it any longer. And where they went, we do not know. And so it was decided by the union that hardship cases should seek work in other mines. And this was done. Strikers who found jobs divided their pay with the union so the rest of us might eat. Ramon was not a hardship case. Only three children to feed. Even so, the mine owners might have starved us out, were it not for the help we got from the international in Denver and from other locals. And we, who thought no one outside our county knew of our troubles or cared if they did know, found we were wrong. Letters came from our own people of the Southwest, from far away. Butte, Chicago, Birmingham, New York. Messages of solidarity and the crumpled dollar bills of working men. We women were helping, and not just as cooks and coffee makers. A few of the men made jokes about it, but the work had to be done, so they let us stay. No one knew how great a change it was until the day of the crisis. The sheriff was smiling, so we knew he brought bad news. The company had got a court injunction, ordering the strikers to stop picketing. A taft Hartley injunction, they called it. It meant heavy fines and jail sentences for the strikers if they disobeyed. A decision had to be made at once, whether to obey the order or not. If we obey the court, the strike will be lost. The scabs will move in as soon as our picket line is gone. If we defy the court, our pickets will be arrested. And the strike will be lost anyway. So there it is, brothers. The bosses have us coming and going. I just want to say this. No matter how you decide, the International will back you up as it's always backed you up. This is a democratic union. The decision is up to you. Brother Sherman, if we give up now, if we obey this rotten Taft Hartley, we are fools and cowards. There is only one way. Fight them. Fight them all. Come on. We don't gain nothing. They'll arrest us. Que nos arresten. Que es todo lo que les preocupa. No se dan cuenta que están arrestando a nuestra unión. The men quarreled. They made brave speeches. It seemed that Brother Barnes was right. The company had them coming and going. It seemed the strike was lost. Brother Chairman, if you read the court injunction carefully, you will see that it only prohibits striking minors from picketing. We women are not striking minors. We will take over your picket line. <laughs> Don't laugh. We have a solution, you have none. Brother Quintero was right when he said we'll lose 50 years of gains. He will lose his strike. Your wife and children too. But this we promise. If women take your places on the picket line, 
The strike will not be broken, and no scabs will take your job. <laughs> 